In this tutorial, I will show you how to use the FX Highlight. The highlight allows you to add light and shadow inside the colored shape. As an example, I choose to use the animation of Bob running on 16 frames. My clip contains a layer with the line and a second CTG layer with the colors. As I can't use FX on CTG layers, I will have to extract the colors from my layer. To do so, I click on the palette at the bottom left of my CTG layer, Extract Color, all the colors in the same layer, which creates a common anim layer with my colors. I can now open the FX stack and fetch the highlight in Add FX, Stylize, Highlight. I already get the preview of my light. Thanks to the HUD, I can directly move the light source around like this. If I click on Profile Bevel, I can configure the behavior of the pixel application that will constitute the internal shadow of my character. My shadow can be neat or have a softer gradient. In the color group, we have X and Y parameters which correspond to the HUD movement, which means that if you want to change this data, you can either move the HUD or change the value directly in the corresponding spaces or drag the mini sliders. If you click on the color field here, you get the picker and can choose any color in the interface. Here I choose the red, which changes the color of the light into red. Now I will change the light color into a light yellow. The Z parameter, which can be changed by moving the HUD, allows me to move the light closer or farther from the character. The light profile, like the bevel profile above, allows me to configure the behavior of the application of the pixels forming the light. The same way, I can get a soft gradient or a clean cut of the light. I can see in my light and in my shadow that the pixels are very visible and I will be able to smoothen the appearance of the pixels by increasing the number of ray count here. The parameter size beneath will expand the area covered by the light and shadow. Here I can see that my shadow is black. If I want to use another color for the shadow, I will need to use the gradient group. If I click on the field of my gradient, I get the gradient window here. I can then choose a preset for my gradient or create a new one. Here I am choosing the gradient A pen to transparent, which corresponds to the color in the A pen field in the color panel, shading to transparent. I notice that even if I move my HUD, the position of the color in my gradient does not change. It only affects my yellow light and black shadow. In order to move my gradient, I need to move the needle in the compass right here and I place it depending on the result I want to get. For my character, I want the gradient color to be part of my shadow. I will then place it at the opposite of my light source, as such. I don't want to apply my effects on the color layer, because once it is applied, it can no longer be edited. Thus, I am going to duplicate the structure of my layer in order to get a layer with 16 empty instances. Now I need to tell my FX to work based on the colors located on another layer. To do so, I fetch the FX image source and place it under the FX highlight. In the source menu, I choose layer list and the name of the layer where my colors are. The highlight is then based on the colors of the source layer as if it were the current layer whereas the current layer is empty. I can then apply my FX on the current empty layer, all the instances, and on the heads. If I display only the current layer, I can see that it contains only the colors with a gradient of light and shadow. But in case I change the sources of my colors later, I will want to apply only the light and shadow, and not the colors. To do so, I check the option Light Only. 
This option allows me to apply only the results of the EFX without the image source. I can see now that in my layer there is only the FX light, shadow and color gradient. Despite everything, I see that the highlight application on my animation is a bit clumsy because of the contact and section between the different colors, which gives a different aspect for some frames. To get around this, I will apply my FX on each color separately. So I delete my two layers with the colors and the FX applied and start over another way. I extract the colors from my CTG layer as all colors separately. I can see that all the colors are separated on different layers. Then I place myself at the top of those new generated layers under the line and I duplicate the structure in order to create an empty layer where I can apply the highlights. In the FX image source, I set the source as the layer containing the hair color. Then I apply. I create a new layer by duplicating the structure again and I set the source as the skin color layer. Then I apply. And I continue the same process for all the other layers. I don't do the eyes for the moment, because the light will have another behavior for them and I will need to change some parameters of my effects. Therefore, I will make the eyes light at the very last. For the jacket, I can see that there is an issue because the jacket doesn't have any color on it where the hand is. So there is a hole in the blue color which creates an odd shadow. So I will add a new source by duplicating the FX image source and adding the hand color source. This will fill the color gap and correct the odd shadow effect. I can now apply the FX with both sources on the same layer. Another way to solve this problem would be to fill the hole in the jacket directly in the color layer and then I could apply the FX on the jacket separately. I continue applying the FX for the other colors. At last I can gather all the elements of the shoes in the sources and apply the FX in the common layer. I can erase the unnecessary FX image source in order to work on the eyes. I also assign a lighter color to avoid a yellow sick eye. I can now apply my ethics for the last time.